everybody. Uh, welcome to the second AMA for uh, How to Red series. Um, in this one, we're going to kind of answer some of the other questions that weren't asked. Um, this is an earlier one. We didn't answer this one last week because we didn't have a spear. I got Lazarus today with a spear, so I'm going to try to jump into it. So it goes as this. I was really impressed with how you dealt with spears at Oktoberfest. Could you do a red sword versus spear video? Um, I'm going to kind of break this down in a little bit of ways. Spears are, in general, they are the most deadliest weapon against reds. I know a lot of people think archers, and archers really aren't. And the reason why is just kind of a fun fact. Reds are all about the burst, okay? They're all about getting in there, doing a whole bunch of damage quickly, maybe one, two, three reds at a time. An archer can only shoot one red. It doesn't really shut down a burst very well. It might kill one red, but a spear can simultaneously kill me and my three red brothers in one fell swoop. Boom, 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 right? So I hate spears because they are the bane of all red fighters, all right? So can I grab my min real quick? Just any min red, too. Um, the first thing I want to talk about with dealing with spears is uh, <laughs> you try not to fight them, okay? Uh, the best way I like to deal with it is I get an archer friend. Hey, shoot that spear. As soon as the spearman dies, then you can rush the line, right? Well, Dak, I'm not here for you to tell me about an archer, right? Try to get an archer to fight the spear or try to get out of the line and reposition to where there's not many spears. If you have to fight two spears at once, bad, 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 bad news, all right? So, but if you have to fight a spear, okay, the general properties of fighting a spear depends on your weapon, okay? If you are using a min, maybe 1v1 or maybe it's a line or whatever, I'm just gonna break it down to red versus spear. If you are using a min, you wanna push the spear down, okay? Now, if you look at Laz's weapon, when the spear is, when this is down, I have more fulcrum advantage because it's a shorter weapon, okay? And then from here, we'll talk about going up the spear. If you have a, a red that is 60 inches or more, you kick it up, all right? Now if I, go ahead and bring it back down. If I try to, you see how the, the see how much there's more distance on this red? He can sneak it around this triangle and he can get it in on the shot. Whereas if I push this down with this guy, he's not gonna be able to, okay? Because it's just less weapon, okay? That's why you want to push down with this guy and kick it up into the sky with this one. 60 or higher, send it tip up. 60 or lower, ground it. And honestly, with a 60, you can probably do either or because you can choke up on it. But if you're using a 72 or something, I mean, you got some leverage. And if you're using like, throw me that 72 real quick. If you're using something like a 72, in all actuality, you're kind of playing the tip game with them anyways. And you have this long haft, you can whirl, okay? So that all goes within the same properties of kick it up with the spear, with this, okay? If you got this big OP weapon and you're trying to ground it, my weapon's hitting the ground right now and he can, he can probably shit and now I can't redirect very well. So you really want to try to kick it up with, with a 60 plus, 60 below grounded, okay? Talking about grounding it, if you ground the spear, at this point, what I like to do ranges on how much of a jerk you are. I don't want to say jerk. How brutal you are. Um, there's going to be a lot of arguments to it. You can step on it, okay? You can. I like to grab it and then put my foot on it. And if he says any, if I get any feedback from him, I release it and gently kill him. Usually they call dead. Um, if you can't put a foot on it, you can grab it, walk up it, and then tap him. Um, but when it's grounded like this, you can also choose to just walk up it, okay? I have control over it. At this point, yeah, he's gonna rack, he's gonna try, he's not gonna just rack you in the nuts, okay? He's not striking you, he's gonna try to get it back, in which case I can just, oh no, no, you're almost escaped, I got you. Let's, let's be clear, I still own you at this point. So, it's sloppy, but when you ground it, as you're coming in in a slow motion, I can't grab it, maybe I can, whatever, screw it, I'm gonna continue to come up on it, okay? Um, that's what I like to do. If you are using a greater than 60, I'll just use the 60, and you flick it up, ideally, you want to whirl it, okay? Let me whirl that thing. Okay? Ideally, you want to whirl it. It's a lot easier to do with a longer weapon, but if you, don't, if you can't whirl it, you can send it to your enemy, okay? You can, oh no, what you do is you just, you, you, you angle it this way, so if he tries to take the shot, 
Now you're in a great position to do whatever you want. Either way, you're kicking it up into the sky, okay? If you want to whirl it this way, it's a lot more dangerous because, as you can see, you can still get that curvature on me, okay? And it's a lot, if you're going to do that, you've got to move. But in this set, you're not in a really great position to strike, okay? But honestly, you can do either one, all right? It's very simple. And in general, if you're not able to do any of that stuff, just hit the damn thing. Just, just hit it, let them know you're there. And a lot of times hitting it and then moving is kind of like a neutral step for spear. So those are the basics. I would say get an archer to shoot it, avoid it, then deal with it depending on your red. And the third thing is kind of miscellaneous tools. Talking about grabbing, okay? Um, grabbing, dodging, and dealing with the spear in other ways. What I like to do with spears is as he stabs, I will suck in and I will turn sideways, okay? This gives me more time to, uh, to react, and the sideways makes it harder for him to stab me, whereas if I did this, he's gonna just, okay? This, you turn your, again, the footwork. There's a big difference between this and this, okay? From here, you got, you have control, okay? When you are in this elevated state, you can, you can lunge forward and use your momentum to grab distance on him, okay? Um, same thing applies for grabbing. If he, if he goes for it, you're kind of just throwing your body back, turning sideways best you can, and then that spear is gonna be there, okay? If none of that works, add a dash of lateral movement. Should, should, should do the trick. So, in addition to this, this, you're going like that, okay? So, you want him to strike, okay? And that's gonna give you what you want, okay? On top of grounding, so, all right? So, that's like overdoing it, like I threw like a whole bunch of things at him. You, might, you don't normally need to do all that, but again, those are all like miscellaneous tools that you can do, all right? The last miscellaneous tool is intimidation. Gee, Dak, how do I intimidate a spear? Well, it's really easy. And I know it was on like a Red Theory video and there's a lot of stuff talking about it. But a lot of times, if I can't, he, you know, he, he's got his eyes on me and I got my eyes on him, a lot of times just grabbing for it. What I'll do is I'll hit his weapon out of the way and act like I'm going to swing and grab for it. He sees this. This is terrifying to his spear. This tells him, I'm hungry for that. I want that. Give me that. Okay? You're still blocking and you're striking out of the way. He's neutralized, but you're sending a signal to him. I'm looking to take your weapon away from you. It's very powerful. Okay? We're just talking about intimidation here. Okay? I'm doing everything. I try to... I may just knock it up. You see what I did there? Knock it up. Go for a grab. Take him. Okay? This it's funny, but it works, okay? Yeah. You don't want, there was some talk about, you don't want to do this because if you stab your hand, your hand's dead. It's a handoff weapon. But you can, if you whiff, that's fine. This does something to them. Just a dry scoop, all right? And hell, if you get it, <laughs> if you actually grab his weapon, I mean, at this point, you hold it and you, you know, you listen. Now, if I grab a spear, the last thing I'll add about spears, a lot of people die while holding the spear. It's quite tragic and sad. Because you did all this work to get here, right? <coughs> oh, you're my bitch now. But then somebody kills you, or another spear kills you. Prioritize protecting yourself. He's not going to kill you, okay? I got this. And a lot of times I'll just, I'll just tuck it. Now I don't have to worry about him. I, I'm defending, defending. I don't even have to kill him, because nine times out of ten, my buddies are going to come and kill him. All right? A lot of times this is where the fight ends. This is it. And many times, they'll just call, all right, just give me my spear back, okay? So don't be so eager to get in there, especially when there's two spears, three spears. And if you're fighting two spears at once, try to domino them into each other, okay? <coughs> and if you're a min, if you're a min trying to fight multiple spears, you just got to gap close and just kind of splatter them about getting close, okay? Um, that's how I deal with spears. They're like my bane. That's a lot of tools, I think. But again, lateral movement and footwork is going to be the bread and butter and staying on your toes. But there are a lot of tools and weird cheap tactics you can do to try to grab and make him respect that you have a free hand. Okay?
All right, guys. The next one we got is it's very, very simple, and this one has like a ton of permutations. So I'm gonna just kind of attack it at one angle. It says how to use a back shield. I just got one, and I'm winging it super hard. I'm just gonna go into some general properties with a back shield, okay? Um, with a back shield, you want it to generally cover, or it's up to your preference, but it can be a little bit outside of your elbows, or it can be a little bit over your elbows. You just don't want it too wide because you. You want it to have feedback, like see how it moves when I want it. Get out of the way, I'm, I'm working here, right? But then it also can retreat back too, all right? Um, this is a heater back shield. I recommend the heater back shield. You are vulnerable to butt shots. You are vulnerable to hip shots. Because um, it doesn't have that, so that's something to consider. But I love the top squares because it protects you against shoulder shots. Okay, other shit, other side. Um, protects you against that, all right? So this, if you can see the recommended height, this is what I would recommend if you're going to get a back shield. Um, no, another thing basically about back shields, I know there's another question I'm just going to throw into this one as well, is how to um, deal, how to use a back shield without using spins. And we'll cover that in a second here. Um, but more on the back shield, okay? Back shields, a lot of it takes, you have to actually throw it into the fight. Um, the only time it becomes passive is when you're here, okay? You want to keep your elbows in. Let's show on the side. So, I, so he can't throw. A, so yeah, he can't. Whereas if my elbow would be in the way, he could strike it, keep that in, and rely on that passively to protect you. While I do work on him, okay. So you want to keep your elbows be, when you're in the clinch or when you're up close. You want to keep your elbows hidden behind the back shield and understand that your elbows should, your back shield should be able to protect you when you have your elbows touching your abdomen. Okay. I think that's a good guide. Um, the other thing about the back shield is you should not rely on it to block arrows, but it can block javelins, okay? If he's an archer and he's at the standard feet away and he shoots me, the time it takes for me to go like this, in experience, it's not going to be enough. Or it just, you know, the archer might not be that good. Um, but javelins, you can see a javelin coming in time and you can, you can block. A, lo a, good, a good block I do with the back shield is I will... I will turn my body like this, so it's kind of shouldering a little bit, and then I can I can flinch if I need to, and you're able to send shots and you're able to send threads back that way. Okay, this is more of kind of like a forward attempt at using your back shield, but again, it has limited properties compared to the shoulder shield, which does it way 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 better. Um, back shields are best if you break through the line, if you assume that they have a line and you get in through the line, as I'm coming through, where are the shots gonna be? The back shield, now I'm doing work, right? While people are chasing me down and hitting me in the back and I'm going in back hacking people. Back shield, you wanna get either up close or behind your enemy, okay? That's um, what I would recommend with the back shield. Um, there are some other maneuvers. Um, the spins you can do with the back shield, obviously the spin, you're putting the back shield in front of him, baiting him to hit it. And the you know, options he typically has to cut my arm off, cut my legs. But the thing is about spins, I'm blind right now. Like the shield corner is, I can't see Lazarus right here. I can't, I'm guessing that that's his leg. And it does take some skill to line up, okay? Um, it's risky and a lot of people are kind of going away from the back from the spin. Which goes to my second part. How do you use a back shield without using the spin? Well again, we covered a lot of it. Keep your elbows in, clinch up forcing him to rely on these wraps and, and all this junk that doesn't work on him. Now, what does he have on me? He's got hips and legs. Putting the, blocking the shots low, because I know this is where I'm vulnerable. The back shield serves to mitigate, so you just don't have to focus on all this while you're up close. That's why when I do close with the men, I'm looking to close low. And he may, he may try to strike for my legs. Some even go really low like that, okay? Go on the other side. And, and that's foot on ground, okay? But see, even though my shoulder looks hot, good, he's gonna, he's gonna hit the back shield or my elbow needs to be in. All right, uh, that's one way to use a back shield when you're in the clinch. The other way is, is uh, there are some weird things you can do. This isn't really a spin. You can come in and you can work on other people like that. It's like a pivot move, okay? You can also, it's like a small spin. You can throw a shot and then pivot, okay? Um, it's not really like a spin because I'm not attacking him. I'm not just doing a spin on him. 
I'm looking to kind of disengage from him and move on onto his opponent. So like maybe if I'm taking a 2v1, you'll put the back shield on him, and then you're looking to engage this guy 1v1. And while I'm engaging him, I can throw a shot like that too. Back shields are difficult. You have to, you have to work it. You have to really put it into motion. If you want to passively use it, you got to work there too. You got to work to get up close. And even then, it's you got to keep your elbows in. You got to have good form. Um, it's not the easiest shield to put into the field. Uh, line fights, again, you got to back hack. You got to get behind the lines and stuff. Arrows. Don't expect it to save you. I've caught a few arrows with it, but you almost just got to be like this. You got to sit here like this sometimes and wait. You see an archer? Deterrent. And they'll still shoot you in the butt. So that's the general on back shields. Question here. Um, this is a very specific question. Uh, how to win duels against sword and borders without having to rely on breaking their shield or legging them first and without having to rely on a back shield or a shoulder shield. Okay, so you're gonna take all my gear away, uh, and I basically can only hit his sword arm, right? Um, I like where your head's at, it's a very specific question, and it breaks sword and board, and the old sword and board versus red duel down to its basic elements, okay? Um, answering his threat. So all choked up, using two hands, and him fully extended, about, about the same range, okay? Uh, if I choose to get closer, he's also in range here, okay? So this is with a man. Now I can use other weapons and whatnot, even if I just use longer. But in general, worst case scenario with a men, you want to choose to stay out of his range if you can, okay? If you can't cast and disable him any other way, you have to hit that, hit that sword arm. Um, the first thing you can do is just choose to intimidate. Uh, a little bit of a rant. The reason I love reds is because every swing takes something from him, okay? Think about it. If I hit a shield, that's one, right? Even if, well, if you say, well, what if you hit his hand? But you're, you're taking something from him. Like, he, a lot of guys will be like, oh, yeah, you can do that all day. No, he, he can't. He's wearing, he's wearing hockey gloves, which I recommend for safety. But he can't take that shot all day. Now, I'm not standing here recommending to pound into their gloves. But if you accidentally hit that shot, he has to, he has to deal with that hit. Red takes something from their opponent every time. Okay? So what you can do in this situation is you aim to hit their sword arm, their sword, okay? I would want to aim to hit outside of his hand. If you aim to hit in, you're just forcing the blue into his cup, okay? So you can choose shots and, and maybe disarm him, okay? And if you can disarm the blue, holy shit. Um, if you can disarm the blue, you're in great, you're in great, uh, you're in great hands. Laz can't catch. Uh, I got tiny gloves. He's got tiny gloves. Little man gloves. All right. So a lot of shot you can throw. You can you can throw as he's and you step away. Okay. It's a very broad shot, but you also can just you can just as he's going to continue to try to keep that sword up, and you can just continue to pound it away. That knocks the sword away from you. Okay. Now if that's not an option, and like let's see if I it is an option, and he steps in, and I knock it away. Okay. He, this is all open. So generally, I would recommend knocking the sword that direction. A lot of redders are like, well, if I can't get the shield, I'm just going to knock it in. Well, guess what? Now, he, now he's, you just wound him up. All right? And you help you put his sword, and I try to go for it. If I try to go for a shot like that, he can still block that shot. Okay? All he has to do is turn that. Yeah, he can just turn that the other way or block it with the shield, and then I'm dead. Okay? So I recommend blocking it that way. Um, in general, keep hitting that blue. Just keep knocking it about as he continues to come at you. You knock it, and he's going to try to continue to block with that sword. And if he gets too far out, you can pop that arm, okay? Or you can just continue to pound, and what you'll, what you'll actually end up doing is you'll pound and you'll get through to that shoulder, okay? Incidentally, you might hit the shield, but hitting that freaking stick that's trying to kill you is great if that is the question that you're looking at entirely. Trying to fight around the blue is not an option. If you try to like do some crazy stuff, you can if you're super fast, but he's faster with the blue. If he's an equal skilled opponent and I try to do a weird, a weird shot, he can do it faster than me. He's got a blue, he can just do it faster. But you have power. So if he's trying to do some weird stuff, just knock that shit out. It neutralizes him and it takes his plan away, okay? 
So that's what I would recommend. If that's all you can hit and you're just trying to answer it, just continue to... And you'll get what you want. You keep pounding. See how he just can't keep resetting. Okay? You're not hitting him in the hand. You're hitting his weapon. And if you're talking about where to hit the weapon, out here is fine, but you're not going to get a lot of feedback. Up here is really, is really not good either. Right here is the juicy spot. See how much, you know, it uses his weight, but it gives you just enough, or it gives enough torque to where you're going to disarm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to disarm very well right at the tip. And a lot of times, you whiff, and if you whiff, you're screwed. So just aim right in the middle of the weapon, pound it, all right? All right, next question. Now this is kind of a fun one, uh, very specifically asked. Engaging a red fighter with a shoulder buckler and you only have a five or a six footer while you have a back shield, or he has a five or six footer and you only have a back shield with a, with a five foot, okay? So I have here Lazarus with a 72, six footer, and this is the matchup, okay? Now this gets, this is kind of like the meta right now with red, like, I have a shorter kind of red and he's got the longer, which by the way, I recommend anytime you're using the 72, have a shoulder shield, really good. Now, breaking down the specifics of this fighter, okay, his shoulder shield depends on which shoulder he's used on, okay? he's using the shoulder on. Now, typically, these guys will put the shoulder shield on the right arm, left, right, right? He'll put it on the right arm, okay, um, because that allows him to protect that lane, okay? Now, he has weakness on the left side. Some fighters will put it on the other side, and you need to think about that, okay? Depends on which shoulder shield he's got on. Back shield to back shield to back shield. Once I get in kind of close, it's just like we talked about in the back shield before, you have all the inherent intrinsic principles that a back shield's gonna do. But his is much more polar depending on. So in this example, we're gonna use him with having it on the right side, okay? Now, the cool things about a back shield. I'm just going to talk about the weaknesses of a shoulder shield. Uh, it's strength. It's easy to it's easy to employ, but you can use that shoulder shield against your opponent. Okay. Now, in a perfect world, or whatever. I'm not a perfect world, but if I'm able to get two shots on that shield, okay, that shield's broken. But here's the fun part: he can't get rid of it. That thing's stuck on him. That thing is a hindrance to him. I can literally just go like this, and his arm dead. He has to protect it, but how are you going to protect it when it's this giant <coughs> bozo? I can, your arm's stabbed, okay? I don't, I don't have to, all I have to do is touch it at that point. So I'm not saying to go out there and try to break the shoulder shield, but if you ever, if he says shoulder shield's broken, he's dead. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And if you lose against a broken shoulder shield guy, you should be kicking yourself because that turns their gift into a curse once you break that. Because he can't block this shot. Okay, he can try to handle block it. Try to, try to. I can, I can just. All I have to do is just tap it. I don't even. It's just sufficient force. Okay, it becomes a blue shot. It's, he's dead. He can't get rid of it. And then, by the way, you can just tap it twice and he's dead. So, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They can't drop it. So you need to think about that. Um, depending on which side this shoulder shield is on, the other side is vulnerable to wraps. Okay. See a lot of this where. They'll keep their elbows in. This is a very common meta right now where they'll keep their elbows in. So what they'll do is, you can use copy me too. They're, they'll try to block like out to here, right? But their elbows are in, okay? They can only, and they'll turn their hips too. They can turn their hips to, to extend that block. They're still vulnerable, okay? Because their elbows are in, they can only go this far. If they bring their elbow back, they're protected against wraps, okay? A lot of shoulder shield guys don't do this, okay? And I take advantage a lot of times. You come in and you wrap that sucker, okay? They have nothing over here. They have nothing over here. You know he's going to handle block it, okay? So you wrap that. Lazarus, keeping your elbows in, can you block that in any way, even if you turn your hips? No. There's uh, no maybe. way. I mean, I gotta be you got to be able to like that, okay? All right, so for you shoulder shield guys, make sure you disengage that, sh that shoulder. There is some advantages to doing that. You see a lot of guys, if you fight a shoulder shield guy that fights like this, wrap him. He'll kill him every time. There's nothing he can do about that shot, okay? Especially with the 60. And you avoid the shield entirely and you take that entirely out of the fight. Hit your strong side too. So don't be a fool 
and try to block a shot over here. He's going to come. He's going to and then try to fight that shield. Unless he's a really bad back, unless he's a really bad fighter, and you can trade, and you can and you can maybe take one off the back shield. We're not now. His shield's broken. You get that other rule. Try to aim for that left side. Okay, so susceptible on the left side wraps. Um, I try to take legs too. I try to gap close. Okay, you lock his short up, and you can go for the legs. But let's be clear. He has the advantage against it in this fight. If I was a betting man and I was going to put money on him or me, I'd put money on him. Because his forward mounted shield cuts off that entire quadrant, okay? It has to be broken. With his back shield, he can do some nice sharp 45s on the inside, and, the, and my back shield is not going to protect me against that, okay? So as I'm coming in, i got to answer that shot and keep it there. I can't, can't do that, and then if he, if he, yeah, I can't rep from here either, okay? So what I recommend is you get closer. Do not fight him out here. You get in closer, and then you can do work. You can get around him. He has nothing back here protecting him. If you choose to fight him out here, you try to chicken wing him, he's going to win. He's going to beat you. You try to fight him, you try to take legs, you're not going to get that leg. You're not going to get that arm. He's just going to cut you apart. You need to close. If you are fighting somebody who fights like this, you're like, man, I'm losing a lot, add some Reduce some range and see the outcome, okay? I'm not telling him with a 60. I'm not telling you to get right here and clinch up and you can. And I do that a lot because I have a man. I'll just, I'll do something differently. But if you have a 60, you do need to get reasonably close, okay? And you want to prevent him from shooting on this side of the lane, okay? Because this makes him just in a perfect position because he's far away, right? I can't get that. That's his weak side. There ain't no way as hell I'm getting and getting any of this, right? I'm gonna hit his glove. You want to avoid this situation. All right, next question. It's been suggested, but best techniques for defense, offense, etc., against each type of weapon, like reds for spear, red versus glaive, red versus sword board, etc. Okay. Um, we covered red versus spear in this video already, and we covered red versus reds in the prior video. Um, so for the sake of it, I'm just going to focus on different types of reds versus sword and board. Uh, this is like a, a class in and of itself. This is like, you know, the, the big question, you know. Um, so what I'm going to focus on is just some tips when I verse sword boards with different red types. So I'm going to cover men, a 60, and a 72. Okay, I'm not going to cover glaives because glaives is very simple. You chop at their legs or you break their shield or you hit their arms about. You have infinite range versus sword and board, so you just keep that range, okay? But for the other three reds, we'll go into it. Now there's a ton of different permutations if you have a shoulder shield versus a back shield. Um, so I'm going to cut that out as well for the sake of video time. I'm just gonna have a back shield right now, okay? Uh, we already talked about the grave digger. Okay, we talked about the grave digger and the ask me anything number one, so I'm not gonna go into that. So I've eliminated a lot of stuff, okay? So if you're not using a grave digger, and I got a men, um, we did just talk about punishing the sword and controlling it, but now I can hit everything else, okay? With the men, I choose to try not to go for the legs a lot anymore. I've taught it in the red class, but against an equally geared or an equally skilled sword border, as I hit him in the leg, he's either going to dodge it. Even if I hit him, he can still dive. You're just too darn close, okay? So going for that leg is usually not an option. Where you're going to win against him is your footwork and lateral movement and block striking, okay? Okay, as you go, whether it's a shield, his arm, what have you, okay? Block striking his weapon with the men, answering his shot if he goes this way or whatever. You're going to have to meet his weapon. You say to yourself, either I'm going to hit that weapon before he gets in, or if he gets the first move, I better be blocking, okay? What you don't want to do is not hit his weapon and go for a shield hit as he kills me, like simultaneously outside. Oh, I'm dead. He's got one on the shield. Cool. That's like how 90% of every red fighter learns what red is, okay? You need to answer his stuff first, okay? But you also just don't want to stand there and then he just machine gun you, okay? That's where you need footwork and lateral movement. So you block the shot, lateral movement, and then and take what you need, okay? Um, that's difficult, but I'm telling you that's what you need to do. Um, you don't want to get in close. You know, you don't want to get in here. Well, I got a back shield. Yeah, your wrap's going to protect you, but guess what? Look at my butt. He's just going to start, he's going to wail it. You're going to lose. 
and I don't have a lot of shot, I can take his legs, he's gonna do what? He's gonna go down to his knees, and he's gonna play drums on my butt. I mean, whatever. That's the easiest for him. He can do a whole bunch of other things. So you don't wanna close with him then either, okay? You wanna fight them right here. It's gonna be dirty, it will be a trade. You know, a lot of times, you wanna just take that arm. You don't wanna to try to pound the shield, because that means I'm gonna to have to block two of his shots, okay? You're also probably not gonna get the leg. So men suffer very hard against sword and borders. It's just rough, okay? But if you really want to challenge yourself as a man, get a sword and board buddy, do some spars. He's going to have the advantage against you, but you can do a lot against him, but it's going to practice the handle block and the motion and doing what you need to do, okay? Protecting yourself with the weapon. Be ready to protect yourself with the weapon. Not with your back shield, um, and I won't go into shoulder shields too much, but it depends on the shoulder side that you have on you, right? But even with a shoulder shield, there will be a trade with the men. And you will have to be expected to defend yourself multiple times. All right? 60, it's a little different. Um, with a 60, you can stay completely out of his range. This is where this is where reds really shine. Because now he doesn't get to fight me. This guy does not get the trade. There will not be a trade. If he if he does get a trade, you need to work on your footwork. As he engages, Steve just saw uh, the pivot in case he comes at me. I don't know if we're in the shot or not. But as he comes at me, I can stay out, okay? You can take legs. You can take legs. You can take shields as he's coming in. You can throw those shots. You can hit his sword arm as he's coming in because he is out of my range, okay? He's not going to get me, okay? You should be aiming to stay and not let him attack you. This is where the core fundamental of red really comes into play. He doesn't get to play. He could be the best sword and border in the game. But if I don't let him touch me, I win. That's it. That's the key here, okay? Do not let him touch you. You know, if he does get in that close, and there is some handle blocking, and there is some trade, you need to apply the same thing as with the men. If he gets in close, you need to work that, okay? But it's not going to be as fast, and the response is not going to be as good. Um, mechanics and stuff like that, keeping your elbows in, is going to help you. But honestly, if he's getting here, you're in trouble. You shouldn't let him get to this point. Lateral movement, um, not just straight back pedaling, okay? You go for leg shots. You can, also go for, you can also go for pocket stabs, okay, if you're good. He can't get me here, okay? So this is also an option, okay? You can go for leg shots. He can kind of get me, but it's still getting on the leg. Again, if you're extending your body, he's not going to get it, okay? Choking all the way down, that kind of stuff. Try to stay out of their range with this, and it just gets e even easier with a 72. He's really screwed with this bad boy. Because now, I mean, he expect he is going to be doing more of a, what I consider not a controlled rush, more of an all-out rush. So what you want to do here is when you strike or whatnot, he's going to he's gonna let that first strike go. You're gonna get the first move. When he does, as he comes in, you don't just you don't just uh, lateral move it right away, okay? Um, because it, once you do, He's going to continue to follow you and he's just going to continue to go. So um, you need to just keep up the pressure. So, okay, continue to just keep that range. It's the same, honestly, with the 60. You just have more room for leeway and he's also going to be putting more effort into getting at you. You have more control over stabs. But I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do the leg shots. They're risky because at this point he can lock you up and tangle you up, okay? At this point you're aiming for shoulders. You're aiming to knock his weapon about, you want to try to keep kind of like a square up here, okay, not his head, shoulders, sides, knock his weapon, take hit his shield, okay, and you want to keep your weapon centered and up, okay, won't be doing weird shit, okay, because you need to continue to return fire because he's going to be rushing you quick with this guy, okay, all right, next question, I'm going to bring in Steed here, uh, how to work with a partner as a red with different combinations, so, you're on my team. But we're not, if, if we're versing an enemy, I'm not even, Lazarus, doesn't matter what he is. He could be anything. Um, it's about me and Steed at this time, okay? So, sword and board, if he's got a spear or other combinations in res, okay? So, uh, Steed's got a sword and board. Um, with a sword and border, uh, there is some communication. I don't really typically, a lot of people are like, man, tank and spank, you know? like. He's going to protect you. Like, these guys, in my opinion, get in the way. I don't really like fighting next to sword and borders um, because they try too much to put their shield in my shot lane. Get the 
fuck out of the way. I'm trying to do work, right? Then he gets out of the way and I just get shot by an arrow. Like, what are you doing with this little nugget? Like, you're not doing anything and this thing's in my way and it doesn't protect me when I need it to protect me. So a lot of times, what I will do when I fight with the sword and board, instead of being equal in line with him, I will take a step back and be right here, okay? What this will do is this tells him that he is dominant. He's in control of the fight. So if he rushes in, whatever Steve, whatever Lazarus is, he rushes in, now I'm doing the support. I have better shot angles, okay? Than being right up here when we both rush in, now we're, we're both screwed, okay? I want him to go in first. He's gonna be the guy who dies, right? Whether he's blocking the spear, blocking, you know. But if you stand up right up here, like, honestly, he, he, he's here for moral support. He ain't gonna do anything else for you. Like, he might be able to block some spearman that is like coming from this angle, but he ain't going to be able to protect you from the from the front and anything over here, okay? Hell, he can't even protect your legs, okay? Even if he sticks his sword arm out to try to protect, it's in my way, you know? Like, Steve's sword is like, he'll, he'll, it'll be in my way, you know, if he's trying to protect from this guy or something. Like, I can't, you know? So these guys a lot of times get in the way. Now, you do have some options. If you want to put Steed on the other side, okay? Now, this is, just, this is just inviting his shield to continue to get in my way more. But this is more of like an independent, like we're on the same team, bud, but we're not like really fighting together. What this says is, Steed, you deal with everything over here. I got all this, okay? And you you, that keeps his shield out of your work zone. But if both of you are trying to convent on one target like this, now he has the lane and the open, the hard lane, but I, I just, I don't have the goods over here, okay? So this is a good stance if you're going to be fighting attacks from this angle, okay? But if you want to collapse on one single target, you get the big boy lane, okay? I know there's a million other permutations. What if he's a lefty? Well, then you need to take that into consideration. If he's a lefty, now the roles are reversed, okay? But I actually like lefties better than righties because, you know, even if his shield gets in the way, you can kind of push it about. He has a few more defenses, but he has better attack now. Like, he can do some work. Either way, I kind of like to take a little step back if I'm using a 60 or longer red and let him have the control, let him take the hits. If he gets lagged or he starts taking beatings, then I can always, going in, I can always step up and, and, take, and take control. But I'm letting him take that first, that first initiative, okay? So that's with sword and board. Now you switch sides. Now we've got a red, okay? Um, a lot of different red permutations. The best kind is like the long and short. Um, this is technically long and short, but with a min, it's even more pronounced, okay? Long and short's great. Um, with long and short, I would be on the other side. So, he's got a shoulder shield, so it's different. But this gives him that broad outside sweeping lane. He gets the, the big cast, the big bazooka shots. And what I'm aiming to do is I'm aiming, to, I'm that shield man. I'm going to close in and block Steed's shots and disable him. Take, I'm going to deal with this, with this weapon why he just gets to fight with fury, okay? So I attack, I attack this stuff, I can redirect, because this is gonna be a trade for me, you know? Like, it's gonna be a trade on my end, so I can work, I can work at that point. Now, if there's more of him, again, you're still, you're playing the shield, man. You're, you're, you're faking, you're blocking, and he's throwing the shots. He's the dominant lane. He's the one throwing the big guns. If he's a lefty, the roles are reversed, okay? But you wanna give him control, he's the guy you want to be up close the best as you can, but when the, when the stuff gets heavy, be ready to back off too because he's got range to answer, okay? So this is a little bit more difficult, but you're kind of like this little scamper guy who kind of comes up and, and you're kind of the one that plays the range game. You're fishing, you're, you're dodging, you're coming back, and he the whole time is just going boom, boom, and he's just, he's not moving as much as you. You're playing the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth bullying his opponents to come into this thing's range. Once that gets in range, he's the one doing the damage, and God help him if they get in the range of this thing, because now, if we get this close, now I, can just, now I can wail on him, and I get the rapid fires. An example of that is, say like, maybe there's two of them, the two of these guys rush. If they rush, I'm blocking. I can kill him quickly, because of these rapid fire shots, typically they're gonna try to rush him. Um, and you cover him when they try that rush. This is a great strategy, long and short. You're kind of the dog that nips at the heels and he's the one that goes for the throat, okay? Um, you're looking to disable. Uh, you're looking to block the spears. Spears will try to take care of him. 
You know, the sweeping, grabbing spears. If I grab a spear, pick up a spear real quick. If I grab a spear, you're not looking to kill. You're not, you're not looking to kill. He's the one that's going to get, he's got plenty of range. And I don't have to defend him because I've locked down the spear. And I hope that he would protect anything that's on that side. I'm not here to teach line fighting, but I'm the one dealing with that spear. What you don't want is he kills Lazarus. Well, if he killed him at that range, I'm going to have him do a harder time to kill him because I have half the weapon. So you want him dealing with you. You want him messing with your spear. It's like Laz gets it, okay? So that's kind of how long and short works with red versus red. Um, you can do two. That's just two reds, you know, the same size. Um, so that's red versus red. Uh, if you got a red versus spear, so we'll switch you go over here, Steve. Same concept applies. Longer range gets the dominant, okay? So you let him do work. And you're looking to knock the weapon. A lot of times I'll knock the weapons up just to clear that range. I'll do a, I'll do a, I'll do a broad spectrum. I'll wipe, I'll wipe the whole thing. Um, again, like I taught with the spears, you don't want to go up with you got the men. You can, you can, you can block it all down and Steve can come up. Like where you, where you want. You block it down and then Steve can do it. Depends on the red that you have, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be longer and you're going to be in the less dominant lane. I wouldn't want to be. I guess you could. Um, if you find yourself like this, spears, you're not really in their way too much. But the problem is, take a few steps over here, Laz. So you're, oh. you're fine. <laughs> maybe we're fighting this invisible guy. This is a problem because if Laz comes and cuts in close, maybe you got a min. And you come in close, I can't defend it as well because he got this freaking spear in the way and I can't protect him as well, okay? This is his weak side, okay? Even if he's got a back shield and I try to leg shot or something, you're still fighting the spear, you know? It's a mess, okay? So I would not recommend you be on this side. You can. Um, it depends on the opponent. It depends, it depends, it depends. But in general, for this person asking the question, you want to be on this side, you want to be controlling the range, you want to be knocking things about depending on their red size, and archers, you're, you're both screwed. <laughs> archers going to get either one of you. So you be fast, be very aggressive, and encourage him. You have limited time on the on the line, just like with red versus red. Anytime you're the shorter support red, you need to be like, dude, kill people, kill people, Steve, kill people, kill, let's go, keep swinging it, because you're gonna both die eventually really quickly. Um, you need him to do work, and you need him to do work quick, okay? And a lot of times is if he can't see something, you need to make opportunities happen, okay? By getting up close, getting back, okay? You're the fire starter. So same concept with long versus short. Last question, guys, uh, and then we're gonna head to like we did the last video. Some of the, some of the examples we're doing like live speed, so you can look at their appendix. But anyways, um, last question. Uh, I realized I have a huge weakness to big shields. Okay, like big tower shields. Um, the big shield flail combo. Okay, this guy's having problems with it. Okay, so even in moving towards the shield size. Shield side, the size of the shield prevents min reds from having much to work with. So I'm using a min. And if I go for shield breaking, I typically get my arm sniped when blocking because they're using a flail. Okay. Um, at this practice, we don't have flails and tower shields, so I've kind of outfitted Laz with the closest thing we can get. I apologize for this, um, but uh, this is the best we got for the moment. Okay. Uh, so we won't be able to do like a real live, a live fire with the with this question but I'm gonna to try to explain it the best I can, all right? So I'm gonna break it down into two parts, his flail and his shield, okay? So with flails, understand that the flail is, is got the hat, it's got the, the dingleberry, okay? So just looking straight at me, if an opponent is gonna strike on this side and you're normally gonna block with a red or a blue, this is your handle block, right? The, the handle is right in line with my body, okay? It's like a, it's just like a, a 2D, right? 2D. You want the handle right here, okay? And it's usually pretty tight, right? Because you don't you don't want to like extend out to like meet the sword and border. Let them whiff. But with a flail, you're gonna have that wrap, right? It's gonna wrap around and hit your body. Even if you do this, it's gonna wrap around and hit your arm, okay? With flails, what you would normally block with with a sword, extend it out about eight inches. Okay. Now what this will do is, if you, you don't want to catch it up here, you want to catch it in, in between. So if this is right here, so it would hit my abdomen, 
it would wrap and hit my abdomen. If I extend it out, it's gonna wrap and hit nothing, okay? So instead of this, a tight, a tight block, you're extending out your blocks. And a lot of times, when in doubt, just to give it a little bit more of an extend, if he comes on this side, let's just say, I'll, I'll, like, I'll like throw a shot like way out here because that flail is just gonna do the dingleberry thing, okay? And you need to be very careful to like not let that, that wrap hit your elbow. And a good way to do that is you don't wanna be like this because now I'm 45 degrees. Even if I'm out here, what it's gonna hit? It's gonna hit everything here. So I'm doing like this. I'm just keep it, I want to like kind of have it in this dead space, okay? All right? And you don't, you also don't want to like block at a 45 because he can still do, let's rotate, he can do a deep wrap on me with a flail, okay? So if he comes in and does a deep wrap, he's going to hit me in the back, okay? So you also want to make sure that it's just out and it's a little bit behind you. So that way the dingleberry flies and doesn't hit you. Um, if you're using a back shield, even better. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, just in general, if you rush a flail man, don't, it's gonna hit you in the back every time. Like, I mean, they may do a hip wrap, they can, but if you do a hip wrap, you just, you just go like this, and man, he's so screwed, so screwed. Like, he's not gonna hit you in the hip, he's not gonna hit anything here, and man, you're so dead, okay? Um, controlling the half. Controlling the haft of a, of a flail, they suffer even more than a sword. Like I talked about hitting here before, man, flails suffer really bad from this, okay? So they're not gonna have their sword, their, their flail out like this. They're gonna, yeah, they're gonna do that kind of stuff. If they do that, you just have to watch and wait for whatever side he's coming in, and you have to keep that outward extended, and it's gonna wrap around this handle. Um, for mins, mins have trouble. If you use a choke down min, you wanna make sure you catch just above the handle. If you're using a choke down grip, if you're using a choke up, you want it being hit right in the middle of it, okay? Depend on your blade. Um, you've referenced men's in this video, so that's what I would do with men's. Back shields make, make flails' lives even harder because of the back shield properties. All right, so that's the flail. Honestly, what I do is I just use proper handle blocking mechanics so that flail doesn't wrap because they have a slow read load. Like a blue, he can literally just, yeah, I mean, he can, you're not gonna do that with a flail. Follow the shot. It might be one or two, but you have so much room to. The shield's gone. I mean, he can't protect that. Okay, if he sticks his flail to try to block that shot, I mean, you just fucking wreck that thing. Like, just hit it. Okay, he. The difference is because it's using a flail, he can't rely. His mud. He can't do like a handle block, like like with a sword, and then a return shot very well with a flail. Like he can. Yeah, he can do that with me, okay? He's not gonna do that with a flail. So, this guy has less ability to protect his shield. He's got wrapping potential, which you know about and know how to defend against now. And in the end, you just do it an old school way of break his shield and kill him. Like, you just, one shot, block, two shots. I mean, it's a huge target, and he's this big dude. He's gotta drop this huge shield. And once you drop it, this guy, I can willing to bet, that was why he used a big shield. He's compensating for what he sucks the most at. Now there's nothing to hide that flail. Okay, at this point, hold it back. Like you're gonna, they'll do this stuff. If he does that, you just bait him. Okay, and you take the arm. You know, play against his momentum. It's like a shotgun. They only got like one or two shots. And you, you don't, you don't want to rush him at that point. You just take your time with him. Um, you just bait him, and then you just. You know, even if I don't hit him, even hit his arm, if I hit his weapon, now he's dead with a man. Now I'm, I mean, juice, juicy juice, right? Cheese pizza, as I like to say. Plenty of leg shots, a lot of opportunities for you. Um, he can't protect this, okay? This is like old school. Um, flail and big shields, it's like an old technology they used. Really popular in the 1980, 1990s of day here. Um, once the weapons started getting lighter, uh, this has typically gone away. Now in Belgard, they have lighter flails, so you need to be very careful. They'll do like a, they'll do like a pump fake where they'll, they'll go like this, wrap it really hard, watch it. You gotta watch for that weapon, okay? Same thing applies though, it's just faster. You just gotta be faster at handle blocking, okay? Um, depends on your red. I mean, you reference the men, so there's going to be a trade. Oh, there's going to be a damn near trade, okay? 
you're gonna have to make sure you're just not handle blocking well enough or you're not allowing for that wrap. And if you do get in close, I mean, yeah, you know, he's he's gonna hit you in the he's gonna hit you in the shield. So, all right, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, we're gonna do some a uh, few live rounds and to demonstrate. And thank you guys.